Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocates, where we attempt to balance the scales and weigh in on the side of justice and truth. I'll be opening the session by advocating on issues concerning the devil and the deep blue sea. Uche is preoccupied with balancing the weighty matters to do with mandatory vaccines and civil liberties. Libras calibrates the issues of Nigerians on truth that have been thrown up especially at this unprecedented time. Chukar is in the epitome of no holds bars as he addresses the matter of a warped mindset. Ekene, on the other hand, throws up the issues of homework and smart work onto the scales. Ultimately, it's clear which side she throws a weight behind. That's how we do business here on The Advocates. We bring up the issues and it's left for you to deliberate on them. All we ask is that you come with an open mind as the session kicks off in earnest after the break. No matter how much of a dilemma we're faced with, when all is said and done, a choice still needs to be made. I'm asking you, between the deep blue sea and the devil, which would you choose? When you're faced with two equally unpleasant tasks, choosing either to obey the other for a gradual easing of the lockdown, or to stay home where you are relatively safe, but suffer the pangs of hunger and its accompanying displeasure. So, when the president announced the gradual easing of the lockdown order from the 4th of May, many assumed it was a tactic to get Nigerians to quit complaining. A reverse psychology, some may say, that was meant to say stay home or battle with your immune system. Even I would have thought that an average Nigerian loves his life enough to want to keep it. Alas, 4th of May came and Nigerians came out in their numbers. The social distance order flagrantly disregarded not by choice, I would say, but for the same hunger which pushed them out in the first place. It means to me that the struggle for a means of survival far outweighs the willingness to leave for which I cannot judge you. A question, however, locks in the hearts of many. Is easing the lockdown really the best solution at this point, given the significant rise in the cases of infections and deaths? While I totally understand the economic hazards of halting activities for a whooping six weeks or more, I assert that there is not much that can really be recouped in these times, especially if same might just be reused to tackle the cases of COVID-19, which would definitely skyrocket from the resulting easing of the lockdown. Let's help put this in perspective. The incubation period for coronavirus is approximately 10 to 14 days. Anyone who happens to be infected on the first day of the easing of the lockdown will begin to show symptoms from the 14th to 18th May. Then you could imagine the number of people this same person might have come in contact with and would in turn have to wait another 14 days to discover the virus in their system. At this moment, I sadly cannot affirm that the government has the lives of its citizens in best interests. But then again, it's your life. I advocate that you choose wisely. Uh, yeah, fantastic, good one, um, straight to the point. But for me, um, you talked about uh, incubation period of 10 to 14 days. Um, hunger does not have incubation period. Hunger is now, now, now. And um, for some of them, they believe, okay, I would rather you know, tackle a problem that I feel now than the one that you know, we won't allow me to live for. 10 days, 14 days, especially, so tomorrow? 
especially given the fact that you know government also had consistently you know given us numbers of those people that they have cured from this and then against also the so many issues of uh, you know some people having to resort to herbal traditional medicine and all of those so the information in that regard is really really lacking especially in a third world country like ours, ours where there are no cushion you know there are no welfare welfare mm -hmm. to cushion the effect of the hardship and and so somebody will sit back and say well wrong as they may be they'll look at it from okay i'll have 14 days to live if i go out but if i sit in i might die today i mean i don't even blame the average man on the street so i won't even say that the problem is with them mm -hmm. i blame the government squarely yes. I, I think when you use the term devil and deep blue sea it needn't have been so if you look at at every point you know you don't have the welfare system or you do even the medical system to cope if a virus got into your country and yet you didn't take acute decision to shut down your airport and keep out yeah, the external exactly. influence. Okay, that won't happen. Then you know that you can't afford a community spread. You didn't take the lockdown seriously enough to implement a proper palliative, you know, Measures. you say buffer. Mm -hmm. You didn't. Now, okay, fine. That has even gone. Now you let people out. And yet the preventative measures you've put are so half-baked. How can you say 60%? You haven't even worked it out for the average man. <laughs> and then you let, you, the people in the banks, I even blame them as well. You know that if people are let out, they're going to come in droves. And yet you tell people, oh, between 10 and this time, you can cash your check. You're asking for trouble. So why don't we take those preventative measures? Where the problem, it's not the devil and the DBC, there are choices to be made, but each time we fail to make those choices because we're looking at, we have a narrow focus. The, the thing I, 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 in a way I want to say I like about COVID-19 is that it's going to force you to face the music. If you make those kind of half-baked decisions and you're looking at the smaller issues, maybe your own self, maybe penny wise and pound foolish, you will live to rue the day when then the chicken will come home to roost. Because if people start dropping dead, God forbid, people will point hands at you and blood will be on your hands. Yeah, we should but, wake up and make it, those decisions today. Can it, can it, the problem is, you make it look as if the government care. They no, don't. We, have to, we have to really, behave like that so we can hold them accountable. Which, we which can't is, completely which is why, disown which is why them. I, I said, you know, at this point, we can't really say that the government has our best interests at heart. Oh, yeah. we, we just like you explained, with the way they handled this from the initial stage, we knew quite all right, but meanwhile, somebody was boasting that we could tackle COVID-19 from the onset. And then it came. This is, where, this is the sad reality of where we're faced. And then the average Nigerian, note that you know, the poverty rate in Nigeria is up, it's well over for the 5% at this stage. So now the average Nigerian, not knowing what to do, okay, you're telling you, come out and your life is you know, at risk. Mm. And if you well, stay, like in, says, if you stay in, the in, the, in the house, so your, mm. house your, your life is also at risk. Yeah. So you have to choose in between. between. You, you and just know, like you said, most of them would choose you know, to go out, fend for themselves, and you know, the survival that, instinct. Look at, look at, just before the, 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 the program, I discussed the case of uh, Gombe with you. Mm -hmm. Imagine people in isolation centers, no drugs for them and no food. So, so where, and, do, we, and, and where so do we lay the where, blame Exactly. So I don't know, did I hear so, Uche or, or Chuka trying to come in? Well, I can come in on this. Yeah. I can come in. Yes, um, yes, you can. Okay, so first of all, let's look at how many people are in poverty in Nigeria. We have 83 million Nigerians in poverty can't send 83 million people into their homes, nothing to eat, no light, no nothing. And you think you're going to have an effective lockdown. That's not going to happen. Secondly, let's look at whether lockdowns are actually effective. Now, I was yesterday, I came across some news from um, the, the, basically the New York governor, Cuomo, was giving a, a press briefing. And what was staggering was that 66% of the people um, that were actually, you know, he actually said that they literally stayed indoors. These people stayed indoors, yet 66% of them were tested, tested positive for COVID. Now, there's so many reasons one has to wonder um, why, whether the lockdown is effective, whether it's not, but I can certainly say it cannot be effective in a country that is suffering with this level of poverty. It just can't be. So I don't even really see it as a, between the devil and the deep blue, whatever, because really Nigerians survive day to day. So you can't ask anybody to suddenly stop, go home, sit down and do nothing. 
So I think the right thing to do was really to ease the lockdown. Let Nigerians fend for themselves because the government isn't going to do no, anything. Question, Uche, the I think lockdown is issue. effective, Sha. It let is. Me, let it me is, say that for it the is, record. It is effective. Is it is, it I, is. Said, I said, let's look at it. I'm not saying it's not. I just said, Uche, let's look at it. I'm just giving you some Uche, stats. For me, it is, if, if properly, let's, let's, let's uh, put things in perspective. If properly managed, the lockdown is very, yeah, very effective. Is. Take, for example, the case of uh, hard cost to quarry with... Um, you know, some government officials in Anambra. Anambra had no case of coronavirus. And then, um, for me, I expected them once... As, you, as long as far as we know. Yes. <laughs> once you lock down the states, don't allow anybody coming. Anybody coming should be quarantined for at least Sorry, 14 I think, is days. Is Chuka trying to come in? Um, the, the, you see, the thing is, um, I disagree with liberals. It's not effective. It will never be effective. It will not be effective you have allowed because me Nigeria finish before you disagree is not with me. ready. We're, we're 60 years not ready. And that's, that's, that's almost criminal. But Libra is not effective no. in Nigeria. No, no, no. The lockdown no. allows you... Uche, the lockdown uh, allows you to get stuff ready so that when you ease it, you are able to have the hospital beds, the equipment, uh, people are obeying the social distancing, working from home in spite of the ease of the lockdown. Nothing I've just said can happen in Nigeria. No, 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 saying what you were saying. He says it's typically no, effective. But, uh, but uh, not, uh, but uh, Chuka, Chuka missed my so point. It is ineffective because no. it is not, it, all it will do is that unless you keep us in perpetual lockdown for 20 years, the moment you release it, they are back to square one. That's not effectiveness. You can, you can no, no, no. Uh, Chuka, you going to fail. Chuka, Chuka, sorry. It's, it's you, going to fail. Chuka, sorry, you missed my point. My point is, mm. if properly implemented, if properly implemented... Said, yes, I know. It cannot be properly implemented. Not by your government. The, the, That's then, what I'm trying then, to say. Then, then you qualify it, you should qualify it. Well, we each have a part to play in ensuring we conquer this global threat that confronts us all. After the break, Oche speaks up for civil liberties in the face of a so-called emergency measures that seem to threaten more than the secure.